looks like the team behind DeepSeek AI is back again with another new updated large language model called the DeepSeek Coder V2. Now I haven't made a formal video on this new large language model, but the DeepSeek team has been killing it with these iterations of this new version. They are continuously dropping these new updates to these models every single week, which is really awesome. For example, with this new iteration, they released a new API, a new chat model for function calling, as well as chat completion. And this is something that has been implemented on a weekly basis. And this is just great to see that the team has been working on focusing on releasing new iterations. Now, why am I making another video on this new version? What's so special about it? Well, just take a look at the Big Bench Coder leaderboard. And this is basically where it's focusing on evaluating large language models with practical and challenging programming tasks. And look who's at the top. DeepSeek Coder version 2. This evaluation is showcasing that this new model is closely competing against the GPT-4 Turbo model and is on par with GPT or sorry, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And this just goes to show how impressive this open source coding based model is. It's actually the best one in my opinion, and it's miles ahead of the even new Llama 3.1 405 billion parameter model, which is just insane to me. Now, we all heard of this framework called ADAR. It's an AI pair programmer, and it's a framework that I've made multiple videos on this channel, which I definitely recommend that you try watching because I was able to create software as well as applications with this framework with the help of having it paired with different large language models. Now, basically, they released their own different leaderboards for evaluating how a large language model is able to compete against other large language models and different sorts of AI code generation. And they recently just released this evaluation sheet that is going to showcase the best large language model to use as a pair programmer with it. And it clearly shows that the Deep Sea Coder version 2 is slightly ahead of the GPT-4 Omni model, and it is also slightly behind the Claude 3.5 Sauna model. It showcases that it is quite good in terms of generation, it's quite good at editing, it's good at different code generation, and so much more. It just goes to show that this is the best open source large language model. DeepSeek Coder V2 is definitely breaking the barrier of closed source models in code intelligence. It's an open source mixture of experts code language model and it achieves performance comparable to GPT-4 Turbo as well as GPT-4 Omni in code specific tasks. Specifically, this DeepSeek Coder version 2 is further pre-chained from the intermediate checkpoint of DeepSeek V2 and this is with an additional 6 trillion tokens. It supports up to 338 programming languages and has a 128k context window, which is just great to see. It's truly, in my opinion, the best open source coding based large language model up to this date. And it's something that I'm going to be showcasing throughout today's video. So with that thought, guys, stay tuned and let's get straight into the video and showcase the capabilities of this new model, showcase how you can get started and how you can actually install it locally. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week. If you would like to book a consulting call with me, you can do so with the link in the description below. I would like to introduce World of AI Solutions. This is a really big update that has been launched for my channel. And this is where I have compiled a team of software engineers. We have machine learning experts, AI consultants. And this is basically a team where we're going to be providing AI solutions for businesses as well as personal use cases where AI solutions can be implemented to automate certain things or to help business operations. Now, if you're interested, take a look at the Typeform link in the description below. Now, it's quite impressive to see that the DeepSeek Coder version 2 is achieving these superior performances in various benchmarks. It is quite comparable to many of these models in various benchmarks like Cuban Eva, you have MBPP, you have Math, GSM, AK, Ader, and so many others. It just goes to show how impressive this model is in comparison to closed source models like GPT-4 Omni, you have Gemini, as well as many of these other models. In my opinion, this is the best model in comparison to other open source models. And we're going to show why as we're going to showcase some comparison tests that you can actually access on DeepSeek's chat interface. This is something that I'm going to leave a link to in the description below where you can access their DeepSeek version 2 model as well as their coder model. Now, there's actually multiple different models that you can access and you can actually download them. 
but obviously they have a really large model like the meta ai new llama 3.1 405 billion parameter model it's insanely large and it's something that you will not be able to install locally which is why you're going to need to have it cloud hosted and you can use different sorts of resources like nvidia nim you can have it cloud source through different protocols like hyperstack as well as various gpu providers that can host these models on a server which is going to allow you to access it you can also use hugging face chat to access the model to get a good gist of what the model is capable of doing but at the moment you have the version 2 light base model you have the light instruct model for the 16 billion parameter model and the 236 billion parameter model now in this chat interface you're going to be able to access the largest model over here and that's what we're going to be doing to test it out as we go further into the video now if you are interested in downloading this model you're going to need to have this program called lm studio if you do not know what this is i'll leave a link to this in the description below it's an application that can easily help you run any model locally whether that's an open source model and this is something that you can do quite easily for example you can search up the deep seek model fairly easily so search it up and you're going to be able to find the deep seek version 2 light instruct model over here you can install the different quant model that you would want to install based off your own preference you can install whatever version that you would want and you can then load it up in your chat interface over here and you can start chatting with this model locally let's now take a look at the coding capability evaluation scorecard this is where we're going to test the model in five different areas we're going to first take a look at the fibonacci sequence generator which is going to test out how it's going to understand the proficiency in python generation as well as generating basic algorithmic understanding so let's first get started with this so it looks like the answer was correct and it was able to generate the function first n within the numbers and it was also able to showcase and list the fibonacci sequence within the first two fibonacci numbers which was zero and one so it was able to do this basic understanding and it finally returns the n of the fibonacci so this is something that was a pass. So let's go back to our evaluation sheet and say it was a pass. Let's now move on to the next step, which is the sorting algorithm. This is where it's going to test the knowledge of sorting different algorithms and proficiency in Java. So this will focus on recursive programming as well as partitioning logic, which is going to focus on the different sorting principles. So you can see right away that it is focusing on generating the code in Java and it implements the quick sort algorithm, which you can see at the start. And from here, it's showcasing how this recursive function that sorts an array by dividing it into different smaller subsets. And we focus on the pivot element, which is going to focus on rearranging these elements in an array that's such that the elements are less than the pivot itself on the left. And from the end, we can see that it does a good job in explaining what it, it basically generated and how you can run it. And at the end of the day, you can see that it did a great job in focusing on this method of demonstrating how it's focusing on uh, sorting all of these different example arrays and printing it in a different sorted array. The next evaluation is on basic crude operations. This is where it's going to create a simple RESTful API in Node.js using Express that performs basic crude operations for a product resource. Now, in my opinion, this is quite hard and not a lot of models are capable of doing it. So let's see if this open source model is going to be capable of doing it because it's going to showcase the web development skills, the knowledge of the RESTful APIs, as well as the proficiency in Node.js and Express. So let's test this out. It's still generating it. I had it basically generate is from the start and you can see that it first starts off by creating a new directory or a new file in the directory which is a product api and it showcases how you can actually install this and how you can set up the server with the port and as we continue to install the or generate this you can see at the end that it should be able to uh, focus on demonstrating how you can access it on the port which should be 3000 and there we go you can run this server with the following command and it actually did a great job in generating this it focused on uh, utilizing the different in-memory arrays it focused on different routes i can see that it created different product as well as a read and a get as well as an update and delete operations function within this script it also is focusing on creating this in simple restful api utilizing node.js so this is in my opinion a success and it was able to showcase a full-on process as to how you can do this 
The next test is on SQL query for data analysis. This is where I told it to write an SQL query to find the top five customers who spent the most money in the last year. Obviously, you would need to support uh, documents prior to this, but it's going to be testing its SQL query writing skills as well as understanding of how well it's able to process data as well as showcasing how the analysis is. I want to focus on aggregation, filtering, as well as sorting data in SQL. So we can see as I'm sending this in to DeepSeek version 2, it's going to be able to showcase the step-by-step -step process. To find the top five customers who spent the most money in the last year, you need to have a table that contains the information. So it tells me that you need to actually provide the information beforehand to process this. And if showcases the step-by-step -step process as to how you can do this, which it's showcasing how you can select customer's ID. It can showcase from where the order is coming from, the transaction itself. It's going to be also focusing on the group by customer ID, as well as the total amount spent. And the limit is five in these five key areas. And it just goes to show that it did a great job in grouping the different results, as well as showcasing how it restricts the output to the top five customers. And this is something that, would showcase how well it's able to demonstrate its capabilities if I was able to provide a document that had a large SQL database. In this opinion, in my opinion, I didn't do a great job in providing that information, but you can see in just that it was able to do this basic operation and provide that data analysis and create the function to provide that SQL data analysis. The next test is focusing machine learning model training, where we're going to focus on this prompt, which is train a simple linear regression model using Python's scikit-learn library to predict house prices. Now I sent this in to DeepSeek version two, and we can see that it did a great job in explaining this process. Now I already reviewed this beforehand, and in my opinion, it was a pass. Obviously we didn't provide the data frame, but this is a Python code that's gonna train the linear regression model to predict the house prices based on the features like square footage, number of bedrooms, as well as the age of the house. So it's going to be focusing on various steps, which you can see over here. And it is quite accurate in my opinion. It uses Pandas library to create the data frame from an example data set. It focuses on splitting the data into training as well as tr uh, different tr uh, testing sets using the train test split. You also have it so that the model is using linear regression from skillet learn. And it makes predictions on the test set as well as evaluates the model using mean squared error to assess the performance. So you can see that it does a great job in having this linear progression model outputted for this house price prediction model. So this is something that also succeeded in this test. So I can definitely say that in terms of these five basic tests to assess the model's capability in various coding aspects, it succeeds and in my opinion, a lot of these open source models tend to fail within number three and five. And it just goes to show that this DeepSeek version two model is no joke. It's actually a really good model that you can actually try out. It's obviously not at the level where it's going to be able to be proficient in real world problems right now, but it should be able to give you the basic generation that is necessary for starting off the base of any sort of coding adventure. And that's about it for this model. This is something that I definitely recommend that you try checking out because it is something that they're going to continuously keep improving and it could potentially be the best open source large language model in terms of coding and even outpacing those source models like GPT-4 Omni as well as Cloud Sonnet in almost every benchmark. This is something that you should definitely keep an eye out because it is definitely the best open source coding based model that's out there. So I'll leave a link to all the things that I use in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can access different subscriptions completely for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.